guys, welcome back to Pepper Geek. Today I'm going to be talking all about spider mites. So it's currently January here in Connecticut, and while we don't have an active spider mite infestation, we are starting to think about our garden and planting seeds and growing plants indoors. So with growing plants indoors, there always is the risk of pests. For instance, last year we had a pretty big issue with thrips. So today I want to go over what spider mites are, as well as how to identify them and how to know if you have an active spider mite infestation, as well as how to treat them and also prevent the problem from happening in the first place. So what are spider mites? Spider mites are not actually spiders. They are arachnids, so they're related to spiders and ticks, but they're actually a type of mite. Spider mites are given their name due to the webbing that they leave behind on your plants. Now, spider mites can go from egg to adult in as little as five days if they're in optimal conditions. So it's really important to recognize the problem right away and stay on top of it. So what are those optimal conditions? Uh, spider mites do prefer hot, dry conditions, but that will not stop them from wrecking havoc in your grow tent where you have a humidifier set up. Now, where do spider mites even come from? They can come in on your clothes, they can blow through the window, they can even come in on your pets. We're looking at you, Sadie Jones, all covered in spider mites. Yuck. So while spider mites are not necessarily as common as some other pests that you may see on your pepper plants, they're still definitely a threat. So let's talk about how to identify spider mites in the first place. Spider mites are very, very small. They're very difficult to see with the naked eye because they're about the size of a grain of sand. And it doesn't help that they come in many different colors. They can be brown, they can be red. So if you see one on your plant, you might not even know that it's a spider mite. While it is possible to see them with the naked eye, um, it is a lot easier if you have a magnifying glass. So there are a few signs that you may have a spider mite problem. And definitely the most telltale sign of spider mites is you'll see the webbing that they leave behind on your plants. Now, it's worth noting that if you see spider mite webbing, your infestation has definitely gotten to a pretty severe point, and you definitely want to try to catch the problem before it gets to the webbing point. Now, also keep in mind that regular spiders may also leave webs on your plants, so if you see a web, don't necessarily jump to the conclusion that it's a spider mite, it could just be a regular spider. Though this is definitely less likely, if you see a lot of webbing, I would definitely assume that you have spider mites. Another sign that you may have a spider mite problem is you will notice kind of a light, dusty, gritty substance on your leaves. And an easy way to identify that is just to hold a white piece of paper underneath your leaves and give them a little shake and notice if anything falls off. If you have kind of a grimy dust fall behind, that is an indication that you may have spider mites. And that is actually the shed off exoskeleton of the mite, as well as fecal matter and dead mites. So that is another indication that you may have a problem. Another sign that you may have an issue with spider mites is loss of leaf pigment. So the mites actually suck the chlorophyll and substance out of your pepper plant's leaves, so you'll notice a lot of spotting that's left behind, as well as stippled leaves, and you may also see yellow leaves that are curling. However, yellow leaves are also an indication of other problems, so don't necessarily jump to the conclusion that you have spider mites if you see yellow leaves. Now here I have a pothos plant that was infected with spider mites that I have since treated, and um, you may not be able to see on the camera, but there are some spots on the leaves where they fed, and you can kind of see the little yellow and white spots where they sucked the chlorophyll out. Now let's talk about how you can prevent a spider mite problem in the first place. If you're growing plants outside, it may not be necessary to treat a spider mite problem depending how severe it is. Typically the natural elements, you know, the rain, the wind, as well as beneficial insects are going to take care of the problem, so you should just let nature do its thing if it's not really affecting your crop. However, predatory mites are a really good chemical-free option if you're dealing with a problem outside. Now for growing indoors, it is really important that you monitor your plants very closely. Now this goes for any pests, not just spider mites. The easiest way to monitor your plants is to hold the plant up to the window and check out the undersides of the leaves. Really spend some time looking at your plants indoors. It's okay to be a little bit crazy and really just check out your whole plant and make sure you're not missing anything. Because it's so important to try to prevent the problem from getting worse, so if you notice anything off or any signs of pests, you can treat it quicker. As far as products that can help with treating pests, you can use a product like Lost Coast 
and spray your plants with it once a week. Lascos is a natural pesticide and fungicide that will work for preventing the spider mites before they happen, as well as treating an active infestation. There are other insecticidal soaps you can use. Some people use neem oil as a preventative. We'll get to some of the treatment options for spider mites, but if you have any recommendations for preventative care, be sure to leave a comment below because I know the community can really benefit from it and we're always looking for new recommendations as well. All right, so if you have identified that you may have a spider mite issue, let's talk about how you can treat it. The first thing that you should always think about is isolating or removing the infected plant. If you notice a spider mite issue on one of your plants, but the rest seem okay so far, definitely remove that plant from the rest of your plants so you can treat it appropriately before the issue spreads. If the infestation is really, really bad, you might even want to consider discarding the plant or sacrificing it because it's just not worth infecting the rest of your plants. The next thing you can do is remove any of the pepper plant's leaves that are really, really affected. Now, if all of the leaves are affected, you don't want to go hacking back the entire plant, but if it's no more than like a third of the plant, you can definitely remove some of the infected leaves and discard of them. Of course, don't put the infected leaves in a trash can right next to your healthy plants because the spider mites can definitely travel. The next thing you can do is to give your plant a really good spray down in the shower or with a hose. So if you're outside, you can spray the plant down really well with your hose to knock the spider mites off and to also get rid of some of the webbing and things like that. Um, or if you're indoors, you can put the plant in the shower and give it a good rinse with the shower. We also recommend doing this with other pests like thrips. After you've given the plant a good rinse, the next step would be to treat the plant. So you can use whatever pest spray works best for you in your experience. Um, some people really like using neem oil for spider mites, but neem oil isn't available to everybody. We like to recommend spinosad. So Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew is a good option for pests, and the active ingredient is spinosad. It works against spider mites as well as thrips and some other pests as well. Other people like to use pyrethrin, but it is worth noting that spider mites can develop a resistance to this. It does take a few cycles, but it's definitely worth keeping that in mind. You can also use Lost Coast as a treatment in addition to being a preventative. And I will definitely leave a link to all these products below if you want to look into them further. The most important thing is to make sure you stay on top of your treatment. So depending on what pest spray you use, there's going to be a different schedule for treatment. Whether it's spraying it once a week for three weeks or every few days, you definitely want to stay on top of it. There's really no option to spray the entire plant once and then they're all gone because you have to disrupt the entire life cycle of the spider mites. And please, with whatever pest spray or product you're using, make sure you research it thoroughly. For example, systemic granules, you don't want to use those outside where there's pollinators. And other products might not be suitable for edible plants like peppers. Make sure you do your research and you know exactly what you're spraying on your plants and in the soil. And lastly, if you have a spider mite problem, you should definitely make sure you clean the entire area very thoroughly. So you can use a solution of water and hydrogen peroxide and just clean your grow tent completely, whatever shelf the plant was on, the room, because you don't want the issue to spread further to your other plants. All right, so with all of that being said, if you have any experience with spider mites on your pepper plants and you have a treatment spray that you really liked that worked really well for you, be sure to tell us in the comments. Or if you have any tips for preventing spider mites from infecting your pepper plant collection this year, be sure to let us know. So here at Pepper Geek, we are wishing you a very pest-free grow season. We are excited to get started indoors. We're gonna try to keep things as pest-free as possible. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. The first thing that I want you to do is to panic. <laughs> no, don't do that. Uh. <laughs>